Hello and welcome to the intro to Unity's new input system. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to convert your project from Unity's old input system to their new input system. So the sample scene I have loaded here is the player run, jump, crouch, which is available as a tutorial and a download. There is a link in the description. Now it's a very simple setup here. We have a player controller and we have some FSMs here. The one we want to look at right now is the player movement. We'll go one at a time here. And you'll see that we have our get axis vector and controller simple move. So this get axis vector is an action that makes use of Unity's old input system. It references these strings here, this horizontal and vertical, which you can see here in your project settings under input manager and axes. And there they are, the horizontal and vertical strings that are tied to left, right and A and D up and down in S and W. Okay, this is the old way of doing things. So that's for getting an axis like up and down and left and right. But also we have actions like get button. So there's get button, get button down, get button up. In this player run jump crouch package, we were using a get key down, which is sort of a hard coded way of using keys. But most of the time you're gonna be using these get button actions. And these are the ones that also reference the strings which use Unity's old input system. So I'm just gonna keep this action in here for now so you can see what happens when we transfer over to the new input system. To transfer over to the new input system, we're gonna to go to Window, Package Manager, then we're gonna come up here and go to Unity Registry, and we're gonna scroll down to Input System, and we're gonna hit Install. So then we get this warning message that says it's going to turn off the old input system and activate the new one. Down here it says, do you want to enable the back end? Doing so, we'll restart the editor and we'll disable the old Unity Engine APIs. Just know that by doing this, you are deactivating the old input system. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit yes. And Unity's going to restart for me. I'll go ahead and save the scene. Okay, so now we have Unity restarted. And I'm going to select my player come back over to the player movement and you'll see here that the get axis vector action is now giving us this warning it says this action is not supported in the new input system use player input get move vector or gamepad get stick value instead so what these are our new actions and you'll see that in our action browser over here we have a new gamepad section of actions and we have a new player input section of actions. And same thing down here, this get button action is giving us the same warning. So we would want to replace these actions. The get key down, again, like I said, it's a hard coded thing, so it doesn't really mind much, but you don't really want to be using get key down actions for very many things. So, so I'm just going to get rid of this and I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to get rid of this. The action that we're going to want to replace it with is player input get move vector. Okay. And it says game object requires an input system player input component click to add required component. Okay. So that adds this component over here, this player input component, but now it's asking us for an action asset. So when you set up your new input system, each project needs to have an input action asset. So to create one, we can either hit this create actions button, or you can right click in your assets, create input actions, and we'll call this new input system. Okay. I'm going to double click it to open it up. And here's where we create all of our new controls, our actions. It says no control schemes up here. So what we're going to do is click this and add a control scheme. We'll call this mouse and keyboard. And it says this list is empty because you need to add what type of scheme it is. And down here we'll put keyboard. Okay. And then we can hit save. Now under action maps, we'll create a new one. We'll call this player. So action maps is a section that you'd put like controls for different things such as the players on foot versus on vehicle versus the controls for menu navigation, etc. And then over here in the action section is where you'd put the actual type of controls. So let me get rid of this one for now. If I hit this plus button, we can call this one move. And over here in the properties, you'll see what type of action it is. So right now it's a button but we want a value because values will give us more options for controls such as a vector two or a D pad. So we're going to go with vector two. And then if we hit this plus button over here next to move, we can add a vector two composite and we'll call this one WASD. I'm also just going to delete this empty one right here. So for WASD, 
you can see already it has something set up for up, down, left, and right, but there's no bindings yet. So what we have to do is click on up first, and over here in path, you can press listen and hit the key you want. Oh, but actually I said WASD, huh? So I'm actually gonna hit listen and hit W, there we go. Okay, W on the keyboard. And then down, we're gonna do the same thing. Listen, I'm gonna hit S, okay. Left, listen, that's A. Right, listen, that's D. And we're all good. So we have WASD set up for up, down, left, and right. Now, we look pretty done here as far as the move keys go, but you need to remember to hit your save asset button. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this. Alternatively, you can check this auto save, but I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that alone for now. I'm gonna close this, come over to our player. So I'm gonna scroll down here to the player input component. And now in the actions, I can hit this little button and select our new input system. And then over here in our actions, anytime we throw in one of these player input actions, we'll also have access now to our player move and whatever other actions we have set up. So for this one, we're gonna select player move and we're gonna store this move vector into player movement because that's what the controller simple move was using before. Now, before I hit play, I am just gonna disable the player look FSM because it's gonna give us some funky problems. But right now we're just doing this player movement. So let's see what happens when we run this. Okay, so I'm gonna hit W and I'm moving forward. S moving backwards, A left, D right. So we have this all set up now. Okay, so that's how you get move vectors. Now, now let's figure out how to put in a button. This is also simple. We can just get this player input button event. Go ahead and put this in here. And we're gonna open up the input actions again. We're gonna add a new one called jump. And for the binding, it's going to be, let's say the space bar. Okay, I'm gonna save the asset, close this. And now in here, we have our jump. So I'm gonna select that. And this is pressed event. We already have the transition set up over here from our old FSM. So I'm just gonna hit jump. So that'll send us off to the next date. And in here, I'm gonna get rid of this get axis vector. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this get input move vector. Okay, so now we should be able to move and jump just like before. Okay, so I'm moving around. I'm gonna run and jump over this. All right. Okay, let's get our player look FSM set up with the new input system. So your player look FSM should have just been one state if you're using the same controller that we made in the past using the old input system. And you could just clear out all the actions from the state. We're gonna start from the top here. So the first thing that we're gonna want is a input get vector two. This is similar to using a get axis action, except specifically we are gonna be getting a vector two, and you could see that we could store that vector two here or store those ranges in separate variables here as floats. And then we're gonna be using a simple look action instead of a mouse look action. So for here in the camera, we can drag and drop our player camera in and we're gonna store this vector two that we're gonna be pulling in a new variable called mouse underscore v2. And we'll use that same vector two here. Now, if I hit play, nothing would happen just yet because we need to specify the input action that this is referencing. Let's hop over to our input system file, double clicking this. So we have our move and our jump, but now we need a new action, call this look. And this type is going to be a value and the control type is going to be a vector two. Now down here in the binding, the path will be, if you type in delta, delta pointer. So this is like your standard mouse input and it's gonna be using the control scheme, mouse and keyboard. So we have to add mouse functionality to our control scheme. So over here in our mouse and keyboard control scheme, I'm gonna click on it. And now with it selected, we can go edit control scheme. So we already have keyboard. Now we just need to add in mouse. Okay, so now that is set up. We hit save and I'm gonna hit save asset. 
and close this. And now in our player, the input action reference will be for player look. Okay, so with that selected, it's gonna be pulling the mouse data into a vector two and using that same vector two to control our look. So the thing that's cool about the simple look action down here in the description, you can see it says, rotates a game object based on a vector two input, typically from a player input action, use it on a player game object for mouse look type behavior. It is common to set up the camera as the child of the body. So the body moves left and right. So our simple look action, it's gonna be pulling one of these axes to look left and right, rotating the entire capsule, which is the game object that it's on. But then right here it says, well, the camera tilts up and down. So that's why we're referencing the camera here. So now it's using the other axis to tilt our camera up and down. So I should be able to hit play and I can look all around and you'll see that it's rotating the capsule when I look left and right and rotating just the camera when I look up and down. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.